Hi, I'm Peter J. Ray. Welcome to Adventures in History. Today's topic is Dearest Mother, Love Ruthie, Ruth Smallshaw Ray's Letters to Her Mother, 1949, Part 41, 2493 Overlook Road, Cleveland Heights, Ohio, April 10th, 1949. Darling Mother, I'd hoped to be writing this from New York. I'd hoped to have had something real nice sent you for Easter, but I lost my purse. It was stolen. It was so sweet of you to send the candy. As soon as Lent is over, I'll put right in. My roommates say it's real good. Finally, someone asked me to a formal so I can wear my bridesmaid's dress. John, John Ray asked me to his fraternity spring formal. formal. It's not till May 21st, but it'll be something to look forward to, and I'm so happy. I think I'll take the net out of the, out of the neck. Look again at John's picture, because he may be sort of important to me. I'm trying to think, think, think. Well, as I mentioned, Shirley, who teaches at East Cleveland, asked me to go home with her to Long Island for Easter. And Bill was going to drive us and said he'd like me to stay at his father's place in New York, and he'd take me to the Copacabana in New York City. But Mrs. Davis said it was out of the question for me to leave. So with 11 days holiday from school and classes, I have to stay here for only five hours of work. Then she said she'd told Dr. Gardner that she'd been working me like a dog. And also said that Miss Moore, Marion's supervising teacher in Florida, might get her a job and be my boss next year. I told her that Marion hadn't gotten along with her very well, and she said she couldn't imagine anyone not getting along with me. They offered me a job at Alexander Graham Bell School, too, also. I guess I mentioned I got a 90 in my midterm phonetics and an A in my midterm in psychology. You know, maybe I have something up top in spite of all the foolish things I do. Yesterday downtown with a million things I wanted to buy, I laid down my purse to try on a spring short coat. In a split second, My purse had disappeared. Gone. Twenty dollars. My makeup case that Marion gave me. The compact that Wade had given me. Paints. My notebook containing notes from every subject I'd taken. And the pen Bud gave me. Believe me, I'm sick. Oh, how could I have been so foolish? I've been so careless so often, and now I've earned my punishment. And so much I'd planned to buy. Something for you for Easter, cards, and wanted something to wear for Easter. The manager was standing right by me and gave me 25 cents for a car fare home. John offered to loan me $20 if I wanted to buy something to wear. He's going to church with me next Sunday. Nearly everyone's gone away for Easter holidays. Dave and Gloria, Walt, Mary and John, and I went last night. Supposed to see the the Nat King Cole Trio, and Francis Lugford. But because standing room only, we went to a terrible movie, the first run of the Bible. Boring, don't go. Going babysitting and have to save my money more. Bye, darling, and thanks for being so sweet. I hope Buddy has a very happy Easter. Love, Ruthie. 2493 Overlook Road, Cleveland Heights, Ohio. April 16th, 1949. Dearest Mother. Hello, my darling, dearest mother. Oh, but I've not felt so lonely and disappointed in a long time as I have this week. I guess in life, no matter how many disappointments you get used to, it still doesn't condition you for ones in the future. I wanted so badly to go away and having to stay here. While it was good for me to relax, I still needed a change. Gloria and I would sleep in, then make breakfast and try to get some work done. However, Thursday, John and I drove her to the bus, and she went to Cincinnati. With most of the kids away, we've got down to a real small family. 
I finished the book and took it in. Probably we'll have to do some redoing, though. We had fun dyeing Easter eggs the other night. Everyone went off and marked their own and then came back and dyed them, and it was so funny as we began taking them out of the colors. They were all marked Red or Ruth, and Gloria said, Hey, we'll have a dozen eggs, all for Ruth if you're not careful. Probably all thought I was the biggest baby. Walt marked one, Red, heart shape, boom, ah, whatever that means. We really had fun. You know how I enjoy things like that. Last night, John went to a fraternity meeting, and so Walt took me to the musical bar where they had a floor show and then went to a movie, Family Honeymoon. I didn't get anything new for Easter. Realistically, after losing my money, I got my purse back, but only my notebook in it, no compact, pen, makeup case, paints, buttons, or money. Sad. Mr. Korb, as I mentioned, offered me $2,700 a year, but will await my decision until I see what A.G. Bell offers. The difference is at Bell I'll be teaching in the nursery, which is what I've wanted. There will be no responsibility or outside work and no speech work, as Mrs. Cruttenden will do the speech work. Dale has decided to teach there, and she'll have the next level. At East Cleveland Superior, I'll probably have four- and five-year-olds, not nursery, but they'll be ones who've graduated from the nursery at the clinic. Miss Benders, and in a public school with hearing children, what I've always believed to be ideal. But so much more responsibility and outside work. But the thing in life is to grow to be a more responsible person. An easy life doesn't do it, as I learned in Florida, so, oh, I sent a little Easter egg to Joyce, and I wonder, and I wonder if you could ask for the box back when she's through with it, because it's what my watch was in. Thanks, and I'm sorry I forgot to enclose Bud's sack. I love you, Ruthie. P.S. Mr. Fortune went to Florida to watch Miss Moore, and he hired her to take Mrs. Davis' place next year. He said he talked to them about us and that they said I was a very fine person and gave a very good report. Of course, he'd say that anyway. I went to church Good Friday and we're going tomorrow. I had some of your candy and thanks so much, dear. I hope Buddy's Easter is as happy as he looked for it to be. I love you, Ruthie. 2493 Overlook Road, Cleveland Heights, Ohio. Undated. 1949. Dearest Mother, Daddy, and Bud, I just finished addressing, stamping, sealing, and posting 110 of the 200, 199 now, invitations that I have to send out for our open house Sunday. I thought you might like to see one. Also enclosing the Hamlet program. Mo, not, Mo and I got back about 1.30 a.m., so not much sleep last night. Also didn't get to sleep until 1.30 after class and supper. I finished addressing the 200 invitations. John wanted to invite the people next door. Last week, Lum went with me to the apartment block on one side, and Al went with me to the apartment on the other side to get the names. So last night I went to the big house. Well, when I first knocked, all the lights were on. Suddenly the house was plunged into darkness. And slowly, slowly, the Venetian blind on the front door turned so that the slats were open. So help me, I've never been so frightened. I dashed home, and of course everyone remarked on how queer I looked. John offered to go back with me, and, all the light, and although the lights were off, it still looked like the blinds moved. Suddenly the lights went on, and a dog jumped out, and a man answered, and all was okay. I guess everyone thought I made it up. Well, it was swell to get back and see all the kids, both at home and school, but I've been ter terrifically depressed again. Shintu and the kids said they missed me so much. Bill had his arm operated on and the bullet removed, but was so sorry for himself that no one was around to look after him. He's getting penicillin shots and is okay. 
After the invitations were done, I had to make four posters for the program Friday night. I guess I shouldn't talk about it, but I just feel like school and everything is just too much trouble, and I'd like to go home. I wonder what's wrong with me. I never used to be like this. Moe says it's just a depression I'll get over, that I can't see my way clear through everything, and it's too much. Then, to a medical student drove back with us, and he complained all the way. Although it seemed funny then, I guess it did affect me. He'd got three incomplete marks out of his five subjects and was wishing he didn't have to go back, so possibly planted a seed of discontent in my flexible brain. I remember, though, how Marion used to talk about quitting, and I always seemed satisfied, but this year nothing pleases me. If I had enough faith, I could see blue sky ahead, I guess, but it just seems too much fog all around. Love, Ruth. 2493 Overlook Road, Cleveland Heights, Ohio, April 26th, 1949. Dearest Mother, I just realized that I haven't written since before Easter, so I came home just so I could write in peace, and I'll have to go down to the clinic in an hour for one of my cases. I hardly know where to begin. You know how it is when you feel weighted down with problems. It seems that this year has been just a series of them. Financing a university education isn't all milk and honey, believe me. But first, I got your letter yesterday and so sorry that you feel blue. And if you'd like a change, you know I'd love you to come. Except that I don't feel I have anything to offer here in the way of a holiday. It was probably a transfer of thought because you see Gloria's mother came Sunday night. Gloria's dad is register of the university in Washington, and he was coming to Columbus for a convention. Gloria's mother hasn't been away from home much, so she came too. John drove us down to meet her, and she'll be here a week, sleeping in my bed. So I'm sleeping in the attic, and Francis is too, to keep me company. It would be nice if you were here to go shopping with her since we have to be at school and work but she's leaving in a week. Did I tell you that Dale has asked me to be her bridesmaid? She and Dan are going up to Niagara Falls to be married, June 18th. A friend of Dan's is going to be best man, and just the four of us are driving up. They have reserved rooms in the Brock Hotel for us for the night before the wedding. I've written some time ago to Isabel and Bev to ask if they knew the arrangement the requirements for getting married, but I haven't heard. Dale and I are just going to wear suits, but I think it'll be nice. That is, when school is out, June 17th, as you've been asking me. University classes are over the end of May, but I keep teaching till the 17th. Summer school begins the 21st. To go back to when I last wrote, Easter holidays were so disappointing No, I didn't have any after Easter, just before. It may have been for the best I didn't go to New York as Bill had an accident. Not hurt seriously, but still upsetting. I was so disappointed that nothing exciting happened here that when John had to study Saturday night, I went out with a couple of fellows that Mary has been asking me to for a long time. We went to Little Women and the Biscayne Club, which had a very good floor show, and we danced and ended up having a good meal of spare ribs. However, it was 2.30 when we got home, and John had gone to bed. When I got up for Sunday school, there was a box, a corsage of two gardenias, and when I came home from Sunday school, he was up wanting to go to church with me, and did. He didn't think too much of our service, couldn't follow it, although I kept handing him the book. He said, Red would shove the book at me, then bury her head to to pray, as if to say, Well, I'm not going to let you spoil my whole morning. However, I was glad he went, but the fellows razzed him so much. Things haven't been going so smoothly. I've been very discontented. John asked me for dates for Friday and Saturday, but Friday he had school, and Saturday we were supposed to have a party here after house cleaning. John wore himself out beating rugs and fell asleep, so Bill asked me to dance, 
and when John got up, he began to wash dishes. Gloria asked him why he was being such a martyr, and he said, because his girlfriend was busy with someone else. Gloria said, I don't think you have a girlfriend. I was quite cross with him, so when I was babysitting, he came and asked if he could come in and apologized. Said it was all a misunderstanding, and would I go out next Saturday to a movie? I said no. I wanted I want to go to a dance, so he said he'd take me. But I don't know. I like to do different things. Sometimes it bothers me to be so discontented. Last night, Gloria took her mother, Shintu, Francis, Bill, and I to Friendly, Inc., where she works, social work, all colored people. Bill and I had a very good time dancing. I really enjoyed it. Now my weighty problems. I hadn't planned on telling you because it seems I'm always complaining, but it's one on all year. Maybe I mentioned it. When I came in the fall, they told me I could get a BS degree in teaching the deaf, but so far they don't have any programs set up. At Cleveland College, they'll give me a degree, but won't count my normal in Regina since it's in elementary education. And at Mather, they won't count the graduate work I'm taking now as their courses for an MA. By now, I thought it would be okay, but I'm not so sure. So before... Before signing a teaching contract, I've got to be assured that I can get a degree from Western Reserve, or else I'll go to Indianapolis or Detroit, where I can get them. I met Dale at noon, and she'd been to Miss Bender this morning, and Miss Bender was very upset and was going to see Dr. Gardner about it. Hope they work out something. It was so sweet of Dale to do that. I probably haven't explained it well as there's been so much finagling, but I'm ready to quit, believe me. It sure is too bad I didn't finish at the University of Saskatchewan years ago, but then finances too. Such is life. It was so sweet of you to, to string my pearls. Oh, one nice thing, I got a new dress, a summer cotton mauve sunback, sunback dress with a little bolero. Real cute, $6.00. I got an income tax check for $67, so it helped alleviate the loss of the $20. I'd like to hear from Bud. How is he? Kitchen, not kitchen, dear, but hoped you could use the curtains. So mother's a babysitter even if she doesn't have any grandchildren. As far as Ruthie's concerned, she doesn't seem to be able to see, see any time for any for a while either. Who did Francis West marry anyway? And did you hear any more about George Ann Kuna? Do have Connie over. Well, try to write more, but must go to the clinic. I love you, and I'll try not to be so discontented. You know, I still think how nice it was of you to wash those sweaters at Christmas. Sweet, sweet mother for so many reasons. Love, Ruthie. 2493 Overlook Road, Cleveland Heights, Ohio, May 1st, 1949. Dearest Mother, Daddy, and Bud, how I've missed hearing from my family. I was so used to not looking in my mailbox that it wasn't until John and I were leaving for the dance last night that I found the little box. And how very dear of you, Buddy and Mommy, to fix my pearls. I have the most lovely family ever and I only wish I could be home. I wish we had oodles of money so you could just fly down again quickly to see me. Gloria's mother and daddy just left, so I guess that's why I miss you even more. They gave Francis and me two dollars as a going-away present. We had an engagement party for Dave and Gloria last night. Roses and candles and decorated cake, and I brought in the pink carnation corsage with the ring in it, and got Shintu to give them the little toy handcuffs and cooking set I'd bought downtown. I got all the kids to sign a card for them. I made, a little, I made little place cards, too. It was nice. Last night, John took me to a dance at Case, the engineering college, and I enjoyed myself so much as I always liked dances. In about ten minutes, Miss Bender is coming to drive me to Greenman's for dinner. Dennis's mother has invited us over. So nice. 
Mother, why am I always faced with spring problems? I thought for sure I was set to stay a while here. Shirley phoned me to go shopping with her, and I told her about it. She teaches at East Cleveland and asked the salary I get. I told her $2,700, and she said, Why bother about a degree? She has her master's, and they're only paying her $2,600. So the pros and cons. Cleveland, stay here. I like Cleveland. I like the people. People seem to like me. I like to teach babies in a hearing school, but like to draw books for Miss Bender. Take an extra year to get my B.S. Indianapolis or Detroit. People, jobs unknown. Probably get my degree in a year as they have the program. I love you, Ruthie. 2493 Overlook Road, Cleveland Heights, Ohio. May 8th, 1949. Dearest Mother, Daddy, and Bud. Oh, but it's such a wonderful world and life, and I just feel I have to drop you a note and tell you. I have a report on the visible speech machine due tomorrow and all my other work, but I still want to say hello to my family. You just couldn't imagine a more beautiful place than Ohio in the spring. The trees, trees, beautiful trees, of all shades and shapes, and the grass and sky and birds. Oh, but it's beautiful. It's more so even than Florida, except for no ocean. I miss that. David and Gloria and John, John and I went for a ride in their convertible this afternoon. I know, oh, but it was so much fun driving along in the breeze beside the lake and through the park. I just can't see why everyone isn't living in Ohio. The ballpark's just filled with millions of people and cars and all the television sets and radios and sweatshirts, all Cleveland Indians. I enjoyed Bud's letter so much, too, and want to have another special chat soon when I can devote more time to it. I taught Sunday school and went to church this morning, and in spite of all my problems, I realize how very lucky I am. So I figure it's a very nice life. John took me to the party at the other house last night, and believe me, a co-op party is one of the experiences of life. All races, creeds, and colors there. I enjoyed it, and John is so nice to me. He's getting a new blue-green 1949 Studebaker car next week, which ought to be really pretty. Friday night, he was at school, and Bill and I went to the corner to post a letter and ended up at the movie, which made it later getting home, and I promised John I'd be here, so we had a little difference, but it's okay now. I was in the wrong. Oh, I had a very lovely dinner at Greenman's, and Dennis is such a darling. They're such a sweet family. Please, dear, don't be upset about Marion and Jack. After living with Marion for five years, I thought I'd conveyed the idea to you that she is often not dependable, more ways than one, and I still love her and just allow for that. It's too bad, but just... just but just never put yourself out for her, and if, and if she comes, okay, and if not, have other people invited anyway. I imagine it was Jack, as she had written a letter to me saying they were coming, and she'd add a postscript about visiting you, which she left blank. Many times we'd planned to visit the Dunhams, and Marion would back out on one excuse or another, and I'd go alone. Don't you remember she was to go to Averill's with us, and with Wade and I to Dunham's? I guess I'd like to see them if I go home this summer, but not that I'd go home just just if they were there. Darling, don't be so sensitive. That's the beauty of a co-op. I'm learning to take a lot of kidding, and you should know me better. Life's so beautiful. I still want Bud to go to university properly. This part-time drag-out of drag out affair isn't worth it in his position. Think about it. I love you, Ruthie. 2493 Overlook Road, Cleveland Heights, Ohio, May 11th, 1949. Dearest Buddy, I'm, conni- I'm commissioning you, dear Bud, to do something for me and hope so much that you can and will. Sunday is Mother's Day in the U.S., and if, and if so in Canada, I'd like you to order a single orchid corsage for Mother to wear to church. 
If possible, try to get it Saturday evening to give to her in case she's going somewhere where she can wear it. If they don't have orchid corsages, then get yellow roses or whatever you think best, but those are my preferences. If there's money left, buy something from you or add to it if you need to. I've had and still have a terrifically lot on my mind, so hardly know where to begin. But a psychology exam in a few hours is the main pressure. I've missed hearing from you, so write and tell me how you're getting along. Lots of love and good luck. Love, Ruthie. 2493 Overlook Road, Cleveland Heights, Ohio, May 18th, 1949. Dear Mother, Daddy, and Bud, Hi, my family. Just another quick note between cases. This is my hard day. School from 9 to 12, cases 1 to 4.30, class 4.30 to 6.30, cases 6.30 to 8. And it's very, very hot. We arrived back from Oberlin just fine and are going back out June 11th weekend for graduation. The next, the 18th, is the weekend we are going to Niagara Falls for Dale's wedding. The 29th weekend, Gloria has asked John and I to go to Cincinnati with her to see Dave. And this Saturday is John's fraternity formal. All this and exams and reports. It's a great life if I only knew what to do about my degree. Believe me, bud, if you only knew how much easier, more fun, and in the end, financially better it is to go straight to university, apply yourself, and graduate, then work. I'm sure you'd be doing it. Even I am learning the very hard way. Must go love Ruthie. To be continued. Well, that concludes today's presentation. Good luck to you with your efforts in family history, if this interests you, finding, preserving, and sharing old letters, diaries, and photographs, and interviewing elderly relatives while they're alive. You might consider checking out our website, Adventures in History, with Peter J. Ray at peterjray.com. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. God bless you. Take care. Happy Thanksgiving, and I'll see you next time.